There are massive changes coming to AEW in 2025. This according to an EVP of the company who this week said that they are promising that AEW in 2025 is going to have a very different feel. We're going to take a look at what they had to say, why this is a good or a bad thing for AEW, and also what this means for the future as the as the company continues to grow. We're also going to talk about two WWE executives who are taking a leave from the company. Some very important names are taking uh, an indefinite leave from the company. We're going to talk about that news and how that's going to affect them as well. All that and much more coming up in this video, so be sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever a new video is released. All right, let's talk about it. So, AEW, the little engine that could, well, where the best wrestle is about to get a bit of a change. This according to their EVP of production, Mike Manshuri, who did an interview with Sports Video Group saying, quote, Starting in 2025, you'll see more of a sports-style presentation in arena in terms of being able to entertain the audience when there isn't in-ring content or taped content happening as part of the television broadcast. We want to create a nice split between the live event and TV show just to make that experience for those in-house feel a bit more special. So that was Mike Manchuri. For those of you who are wondering, he has been with AEW for quite some time now. He, I believe, took over for uh, no relation. Kevin Sullivan, um, again, not the booker, but uh, he was a producer for AEW. He also, Mike Manchuri, I believe, also had a stint in TNA as a producer. And you can see a lot of that influence in what he does. But... AEW production seems to be getting a bit of a facelift, at least in the arena. I would also imagine, as they usually do at the beginning of every year, AEW kind of does tweak things up uh, at the beginning of every year. Every season premiere, they bring in a new stage or they adjust the logo or do things of that nature. And I think you can expect quite a bit of the same here, but... Focusing in on what exactly he was talking about, the live event aspect of it. This is a very critical piece of the puzzle for AEW because as they grow, as their events become more important, as their events become bigger in stature, as the company continues to grow, you need to kind of fill these things out. And as someone who has been to like about 15 AEW events or something like that, some like crazy number, I can tell you. One place where they really lag behind in WWE as far as the in-arena experience is like the moments in between commercial break, the moments in between matches, the moments when you're having like backstage segments. Those moments are, I'm not going to say a drag, but there's not much going on. There's not much there to keep you in your seat. A byproduct of that is... It makes the show a little bit boring at times and it will cause you to go up and get snacks more often or, you know, like go on your phone and you might not pay attention to the promo that's playing. And one of the things that WWE did a couple of years ago is they started to treat that part of it a bit more of a like like you would like a sport, right? If you go to a basketball game. In between the quarters, during commercial breaks or timeouts, there's music playing, there's hype happening, there's like commercials for different things, there's like little contests they're doing, like, you know, like a slam dunk, like you can use like dunk this and you get like $10,000 or something. If you can make a three point shot, you get like a um, million dollars, whatever it is, right? Um, there's like things like that, that, that happen, that make the in arena experience a little bit more exciting. WWE has done that. Now, if you go to an arena in WWE, the second the thing goes to commercial for the fans, WWE is like playing like music. They're playing licensed music. It's a party in there. 
Like, go to a WWE event. Like, that part of it is really fun. And I think that part is something AEW is missing, and that's something they're going to get. And it's going to heighten the experience for fans. It's also going to make the show, honestly, feel a lot bigger because there's more going on. Because, you know, it, it's more engaging than, like, because you're not, even for the fans who are in the arena, one thing you need to understand is you're not just, like, competing against the like the merch stand or the uh, the the concessions. You're competing against people with their phones. That's what you're competing against. You're competing against people who have literally the entire internet at the fingertips. And it's a lot to compete with. So you have to heighten up the in-arena experience. And I think that's part of the deal here with AEW. Another part that I think we could see is the stage and the you know, production design. I think a lot of this is obviously a part of they're upscaling. AEW in 2025 and beyond, I think, is going to upscale a lot as far as the different offerings they have. Obviously, there's talk of them potentially going to Fox and having another show there. And this is, and they're doing a few shows internationally. You have Wrestle Dynasty in Japan in January. You have Grand Slam in Brisbane, Australia in February. You have a stadium show at AEW All In Texas. You have AEW Forbidden Door London in August. They have quite a few big arenas to fill, big stadiums to fill. And that is part of their global expansion. They don't want to just be uh, the, the biggest wrestling company or the second biggest wrestling company in North America. They want to be arguably one of the biggest wrestling companies in the entire world. One thing that will help them, and, and I think this is something interesting to, uh, to, to just pay attention to over the next couple of years. In a lot of international markets, streaming has not necessarily caught up to where those specific markets are. And I'm talking about like, you know, like international markets. For example, I'll use uh, Pakistan as an example. Streaming in Pakistan is not that big, right? In 2025, January, the WWE is going all to Netflix internationally, including Pakistan, for example, which not only opens up the possibility for, you know, AEW to take a lot of international like TV spots, TV deals that WWE had on channels where people are used to watching wrestling, on channels where people are used to tuning into, on channels that have great followings that, you know, in many countries outweighs that of streaming. People are used to watching on their TVs. So in that respect, it could offer AEW to get, you know, a bit of an extra boost, maybe an even a leg up in some markets. And I would not be surprised. This is, you're going to say, I'm crazy. I don't think it's going to be the UK overnight, at least. I think it's going to be the UK on things. But in some markets, you will see AEW, I think, become the the number one company. And again, I just, that does not mean that they are going to become the global leader. They're not going to become WWE. But that is going to help them when they do eventual tours in these places. It's going to help them in their popularity. It's going to help them generate a lot more revenue. AEW is going to be way more valuable in international markets now that WWE is all being taken away at the same time. They're going to be able to get some really good deals in, in these international markets. And it's something to keep an eye on. And speaking of really good deals, I'm going to tell you guys about a great deal. Because you guys can save $20. How'd you like that segue? $20 using the promo code REALTAKE today. Let me tell you how it works. You guys are going to a concert. You guys are going to a wrestling show. You guys are going to a football game, baseball game, basketball game, whatever you're going to. I got you covered. All you got to do, download the SeatGeek app. Use the promo code REALTAKE when you sign up. And bing, bong, boom. You get $20 off. That is $20 in your wallet that you get to spend however you want. You could use it at the merch stand. You could use it at the concessions. You could use it on parking. You could use it to buy yourself, you know, a big burrito at Chipotle, whatever you want. I ain't going to tell. You can use it by something else. I don't, I don't know. 
I don't know. I'm all about it. Whatever. But guys, in all seriousness, $20 off using the promo code RealTake. This allows you to save $20 off your next for your first purchase when you sign up on SeatGeek. SeatGeek is an amazing app. I use it myself. It rates tickets from a 1 to 10 scale. It allows you to see exactly the type of deal that you are getting. Fantastic. One of the industry leaders in that regard. You guys can save yourself $20 off your next in-ring, well, in-person wrestling experience by using the promo code RealTake, by hitting the link in the description. It's all you got to do. It's right there. You hit that link, download the app, use that promo code RealTake, bada bing, bada boom. $20 saved right there. So, guys, go check that out and, yeah, enjoy everything that it has to, to offer there. As we move on and uh, talk about our next story, let's talk about WWE. Uh, a little bit of shifting going on on the uh, executive front here for uh, WWE as uh, two of WWE's executives are temporarily on leave. This according to Dave Meltzer of uh, F4W Online. Bruce Prichard and Michael Hayes are currently on temporary leave from WWE, according to multiple sources in the company. Both are expected back, although the time frame was said to be indefinite. Prichard's absence is officially said to be due to a family emergency, and Hayes' absence is due to personal issues. First and foremost, I want to say on a personal level, hopefully I am sending my best wishes to both them and their families, whatever is going on, whatever they're going through, hopefully it gets resolved and they are all okay. That being said, this is a noteworthy story because these are two of WWE's most important, not only executives, but seasoned backstage professionals. Michael Hayes has been around for almost uh, 30-something years at this point in WWE in some capacity. Same deal with Bruce Prichard. Of course, he did take about like 10 or so years off after he was fired in 2008, but he came around back in 2019, I believe. And he has been a fixture right there, first with Vince McMahon as his right-hand man, and now right there and creative with Paul Levesque, Triple H. So this is a massive uh, hole, not only in the executive department with uh, Bruce Prichard, but Michael Hayes, who is a their most seasoned and, and tenured producer who has been tasked with producing some of the biggest segments in WWE, the Bloodline stuff. It has a lot of Michael Hayes on it. A lot of the World Title Cody stuff has been Michael Hayes's baby in that regard. So there's, you know, a lot of... of, of there's a lot of stuff to be done there. Obviously, they have you know Paul Heyman and others to fill their shoes, but this is going to be something to keep an eye on. And the the thing with Bruce Pritchard is you know Pritchard has always been he has always been someone who's been largely associated with Vince McMahon and the Vince McMahon regime. He has for a very long time been called you know Vince McMahon's like most trusted advisor, all these kinds of things, and you know. There was always a lingering question of how long he was going to be around, right? There's always a lingering question of like, how long is Triple H going to keep Bruce Pritchard around, who is at this point really the the last remnants of the Vince McMahon era, the last real Vince McMahon guy in WWE? How long is he going to keep him around? It's not seemed to be stopping him from from you know keeping Pritchard around, but this could be an opening if. That does happen, and this is a very ruthless business. Let's not forget when Triple H was, you know, uh, when Triple H had his his uh, medical emergency, when he had his heart attack. At that point, Triple uh, uh, Vince McMahon, excuse me, took that opportunity to take all power away from Triple H and NXT, and he turned NXT into his brainchild. And this is a business that that does that to you, and this is a business where that does happen. So I'm not saying I hope it happens. I'm not saying it should happen. I'm not saying anything, but I think it's something to keep an eye on whether or not Pritchard does end up coming back or when he does end up coming back. But we will see what happens, obviously. Um, again, first and foremost, hopefully whatever is going on in both of their lives, everyone is okay and, you know, wishing the best for whatever everyone there is going through. So 
Shout out to them. Shout out to you guys. Guys, let me know in the comment section what you guys think about this. What do you also think about AEW? Those production, those production, production, those production changes. What do you guys think? What else do you want to see change in AEW in 2025? Let me know in the comment section. Also, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever a new video is released. Until next time, guys, be happy, be healthy, and as always, keep it real.